What is Address Resolution Protocol? Address Resolution Protocol is a network protocol used to map a 32-bit IP addresses into 48-bit MAC addresses in a local area network. This is essential because while IP addresses are used for identifying devices on a network at the internet layer, MAC addresses are required for actual data link layer communication within the local network. Imagine a teacher in a classroom wants to hand out a graded test to a student named Alex, but doesn't know where Alex is sitting. In this scenario, we can imagine the teacher as the sender and the students as recipients each sitting at a desk with a unique number. The class roster is a list that maps student names to their desk numbers if they have already been identified. The teacher stands at the front of the classroom and asks, Who is Alex? Raise your hand and tell me your desk number. This question is heard by all students in the classroom. It's a broadcast message meant for everyone. Alex sitting at desk 3 hears the question and raises his hand, saying, I am Alex, and I'm sitting at desk 3. The teacher notes in his class roster that Alex sits at desk 3. Now that the teacher knows Alex's desk, he walks directly to desk 3 and hands Alex the graded test. In this scenario, we can consider the teacher as the sender who knows his own IP and MAC address and needs to send data to recipient 3 using its IP address. So it broadcasts an ARP request packet and asks for the MAC address of the recipient 3. This ARP request is sent to all devices on the local network. Recipient 3 responds directly to the sender with an ARP response. Accordingly, the sender updates its ARP table with the mapping, and now it can send data directly to recipient 3 using its MAC address. This process allows devices on the same local network to find each other's hardware addresses and communicate effectively. Let's take a closer look at the structure of an ARP Ethernet frame. When the ARP protocol is used in an Ethernet network, the ARP message is encapsulated within an Ethernet frame, which includes several key fields. Preamble is a sequence of alternating ones and zeros that allows network devices to synchronize their clocks before data transmission begins. Destination MAC address is the MAC address of the target device. In the case of an ARP request, this is typically a broadcast address since the sender does not yet know the MAC address of the target. Source MAC address is the MAC address of the device sending the ARP request or reply. Ethertype indicates the type of protocol encapsulated in the frame. For ARP, the ether type value is 0x0806. ARP payload contains the actual ARP packet which we'll discuss in more detail shortly. Padding is used to ensure that the Ethernet frame meets the minimum size requirement of 64 bytes. If the ARP frame, including headers and data, is smaller than this, padding bytes are added to reach the required size. Frame check sequence holds the result of a cyclic redundancy check calculation. CRC is an error detection code used to identify accidental changes to the data in the frame. The ARP packet itself consists of several fields, each serving a specific purpose. Hardware type specifies the type of hardware address being used. For Ethernet, this value is 1. Protocol type specifies the type of protocol address that the ARP request is mapping to a hardware address. In the case of IPv4, this value is 0x0800. Hardware address length specifies the length of the hardware address in bytes. For Ethernet, this value is 6, since a MAC address is 6 bytes long. Protocol address length specifies the length of the protocol address in bytes. For IPv4, this value is 4, as an IPv4 address is 4 bytes long. Operation indicates the operation being performed one for an ARP request, and two for an ARP reply. The sender hardware address refers to the MAC address of the device that transmits the ARP packet. The sender protocol address indicates the IP address of the device that is sending the ARP packet. The target hardware address represents the MAC address of the device that is meant to receive the packet. The target protocol address is the IP address of the intended recipient, and it's the one whose MAC address is being requested in an ARP request. To illustrate, let's consider a snapshot of a captured ARP request frame. It typically starts with an Ethernet header, where the source MAC address is the MAC address of the requesting device, and the destination MAC address is set to the broadcast address, ensuring the request reaches all devices on the local network. Also, as you can see, the Ethernet frame type is specified as ARP. Within the ARP payload, 
we can see the operation code is set to 1, indicating that this packet is an ARP request message. In the following, we can see the sender's IP and MAC addresses and the target IP address for which the MAC address is being requested. Notably, the target MAC address field is set to set of zeros rather than a broadcast address. This indicates that the requesting device does not yet know the target's MAC address. Let's quickly get to an example to become more familiar with the ARP protocol during a sample ping command. Suppose client 1 wants to ping www.youtube.com. First, client 1 needs to know the IP address of www.youtube.com, so it sends a DNS query to ask its DNS server. Although the DNS server's IP address is already defined for the client, its MAC address is unknown. Therefore, Client 1 broadcasts an ARP request for the DNS IP address via an Ethernet frame across the local network, asking, who has this IP address? The switch receives the frame and stores the source MAC address in its MAC table for further reference. Being an ARP broadcast frame, the switch sends it out to all ports in the same VLAN except the receiving port. At Client 2 and Client 3, the received frame's destination MAC address is a broadcast address, so they process the frame. However, since the ARP request's destination IP address does not match their receiving port's IP address, their ARP process drops the frame. On router 1's end, since the ARP request's destination IP address does not match the receiving port's IP address, the proxy ARP process checks the routing table to find the best route to that IP. As the requested IP address is reachable via the receiving port itself, the ARP process updates the ARP table with the received information and drops the frame. At the DNS server end, the ARP process handles the received ARP request frame and replies by sending out the DNS server's MAC address via an ARP reply frame to client 1's MAC address. When the switch receives the ARP reply frame, it stores the frame's source MAC address in its MAC table. Then, the switch looks in its MAC table for the destination MAC address and sends the frame out the corresponding port to client 1. At client 1, the ARP process receives the ARP reply frame containing the DNS server's MAC address, so updates its ARP table, and now it can send the intended DNS query to the DNS server to get YouTube's IP address. When the DNS server receives the DNS query frame, it finds an IP address associated with the domain www.youtube.com and sends back a DNS response. While client 1 receives the YouTube IP address, the ping process starts and creates an ICMP echo request message. However, as the YouTube IP address is not in its own subnet, the device must set the next hop to its default gateway router one. But router one's MAC address is not in its ARP table, so the ICMP packet is buffered and the same ARP process is executed again to resolve the default gateway's MAC address. Upon receiving the default gateway's MAC address, the ARP process retrieves the ICMP packet from the buffer and sends it to the default gateway. When router 1 receives the ICMP packet, it looks up the destination IP address in its routing table, finds the corresponding port for that IP address, sets the frame's destination MAC address to the one found in the table, and sends out the packet. The same process occurs in router 2. When the YouTube server receives the ICMP packet, the ICMP process handles it. It replies to the echo request by setting the ICMP type to echo reply. Because the destination of the packet which is client 1's IP address is not within its subnet, the device sets the next hop to the default gateway and sends out the Ethernet frame. Therefore, the ICMP process receives an echo reply message and the ping process starts the next ping request. In conclusion, at layer 2 of network communications, all devices on the local network need to know the MAC addresses of other devices to communicate effectively. Understanding how ARP resolves IP addresses to MAC addresses is fundamental for ensuring smooth and efficient network operations. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and leave any questions or comments below. Hope to see you in the next video.